Hi guys, I'm Tanya, and I'm getting high con mi mamá. Hi, I'm Jackie. We call her Mama Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell me about the first time you got high, Mom? Went to New York for nine months and lived in New York nine months with my biological parents. And during that time, I was so unhappy, had no idea what I was doing, and got high out of my mind. The second time that I started in my 40s, it was more controlled, mm -hmm. and it was a uh, flower. Mm -hmm. It was not edibles or anything. And I was with your auntie, with Titi Linda. <laughs> Me and her would have a lot of fun, quietly, hiding from everyone. <laughs> it is fun to get high with Titi. We were hiding from everyone all the time. <laughs> she would just look at me, I'd look at her and like... <laughs> so mom, how do you usually consume cannabis? The edibles I do at night to sleep. Mm -hmm. They help with my, my fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. They help with pain. They have CBD. Mm -hmm. And the pens, I just do that for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that you were smoking or even actually consuming cannabis until I was like 20. I had been doing it for many years. You know, we used to hide the bongs and yeah. the weed all over the garage and the backyard. I didn't really care. I used to tell him, why don't we just sit her down and let her know? She's not stupid. <laughs> you know? But he did not want you. He says, no, I don't want her to see me in a different way. So he didn't want you to know. It's funny how then he went and bought you this beautiful bong, right? <laughs> He's bought me too. He's bought you too. <laughs> so the first time we got high together... Was it Mother's Day? It was a Mother's Day. So that is our tradition is to get high together. Yeah. And we're passing the joint and then it comes to you because I had it and you decide to sit next to me, I remember. I go to pass it to you and you're like, no, I can't do this, me. No. <laughs> and I remember like, just take it. But I did end up doing it. You did. You took a lot of tokes. I did. So that was like, a fun Mother's Day we had. We did have fun that Mother's Day. Yeah. And I used to actually take you to the dispensary and I thought it was okay because you were always responsible and that was what the main thing that concerned me was that you would use it responsibly, that it would not affect your schooling or work or anything. And you always showed since you were young, that you were very responsible. So it did not worry me at all. For pre-Prop 64 days, I know we went to a lot of sketchier places, mm -hmm. but since then, like I remember during the pandemic, we were able to go, so. We were going to very nice places. Yes. Like, oh, I was much you... more comfortable and felt more, much more safe. Yes. <laughs> and how were your experiences with going to decide what you want? There was more knowledge Mm -hmm. um, when you walk in and, you know, they explain things better than the sketchier places. There was just get in, get it, get out, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember the times where you would just get in the corner of, in New York, a little bag, and then you went and got a pack of double mint gum and you took the gum out and took the paper out and rolled it. <laughs> Every time I show you gum, you literally start acting like, like you're going to roll it. <laughs> I'm like, just eat the gum. Take the double mint gum. <laughs> Then I started the edibles when I got sick. We need to stop thinking, oh my God, it's drugs. I use it for so many things and they're good for migraine headaches, um, fibromyalgia, um, just inflammation in the body. They couldn't give me any medication for any of my problems because now of the liver. And I asked my doctor, well, what do I do with all this pain that I have now? And I can't do anything for the psoriatic arthritis, for the fibromyalgia. What do I do? And that's when he told me medical marijuana. But he did tell me because I was desperate. I was in so much pain and I couldn't do anything. And, and I was just grateful I was still here. <laughs> Um, and Me too. that's when I started doing the edibles, and they've been a lifesaver. The ones I got in the past were like that, where things would just slap me in the face, a little out of it most of the time. And I didn't like that. I'm like you, I don't like the out of control feeling. Like one night I got up at night to go to the bathroom, and I literally was holding on to walls to make it to the bathroom. And I was like, oh my God, this, this is not good. Versus these, I'm really happy with what you gave me. Um, I've been noticing that I'm getting up and walking a lot better mm -hmm. in the morning when I'm taking it at night. Yeah. So that's what I have noticed personally for you as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. It creates very sluggish and lethargic yes. even the next day for you compared to these. Like mm -hmm. you say, you wake up refreshed and ready for the next yes. day. And I think because of that, with this slip, they make it so strong because the focus on the dislip is just to get very high. Mm -hmm. It's not a 
full spectrum high, like these are live ice water hash. Mm -hmm. And their purpose is to be a full spectrum multi-dimensional experience. So it's not meant to smack you all at once. It's kind of like waves, I would say. You go yes. through waves of highs. Yes. Mija, I thought we were getting high. Can say less, mommy. We have a blueberry, which is indica dominant. And we have a peach mango sativa and strawberry banana and watermelon as well. We came out with a new one, which is our cloudberry. And the strain dominance is mother's cake. Ooh. So what better way to celebrate the day than with some mother's cake to celebrate you? Yay. Okay, let's get you high. <laughs> I'm all about celebrating me. What advice do you have for mothers and daughters wanting to start the conversation for wanting to talk about cannabis consumption, recreationally and med medicinally? There's gotta be more communication. You know, um, parents don't wanna tell their kids things because you feel that if they're young and you talk about these things that it's giving an okay for them to do it. But when they become adults or an older age where they're gonna be exposed to it anyway, then you should be talking to your kids about it to keep them safe. I wish I had done this back then. I didn't do it, obviously, but I wish I had had more communication about it to keep you safe. As a mother, you still have that feeling you want to protect your kids, you want them to be safe, you want them to be okay, you want them to be happy. And if I don't know what's happening in your life because you're scared to tell me, then I can't fulfill my part as a mother the way I want to do it. I need to know what's happening in your life. I can see even that like at this age with my friends and their parents, like I have friends that don't even tell their parents that they smoke weed, you know, and they don't feel comfortable having yeah. these conversations. And I appreciate that like you still want to have an open communication that you're like, I don't judge you if you're doing anything outside of it. So even if I try other drugs, like you're like, please tell me, mm -hmm. like it's just an open conversation, which I appreciate. What did you even think when I started the, working in the industry? Oh my goodness, I was highly upset. You know that. I was upset because I did not understand the industry. I was not aware of what this business had become. I am, I'm very impressed. Um, it is a tremendous business. I understand now what it's all about. Um, I'm very proud of you. I'm proud that you followed what you wanted to do and not what I was trying to push you to do. I don't want you to cry. <laughs> You can make me cry and I don't want no mascara running. <laughs> yeah, it was really hard. I wanted to prove a lot to you. So I felt like I was disappointing you. Oh no, you were never disappointing me. I mean, you've always excelled. You've always done good. You've always been responsible. Yeah. So I knew you were finding your way and we had to let you. And I'm glad we did. This whole media part, it was not something we even thought about when we thought weed. When we thought of, of weed or marijuana or drugs, um, it was all dark. Because, you know, in the 80s, there was a lot of things happening and a lot of people uh, dying, overdoses and getting sick. And even now there's, you know, I have my brother in New York. He lost two nieces this year because they were buying drugs in the street and it was mixed with fentanyl. So it's very dangerous, it's still happening out there. And if people would just realize and stop doing that and buying in the street and just going to reputable places that are safe, a lot of lives would be saved. Go to your authorized dealers. Yes, go to authorized dealers. WCC.com slash find.